So I want you to say with me, Ben Sonny, see that we do care. But if we don't say anything, silence is complacency. And complacency means that we accept these behaviors. This is a small village. We have a lot of power. There is no reason why we should be burying our youth. There is no reason why mothers should be burying their kids. It's an island. Where are these guns coming from? Okay? The conversations nobody wants to have. It's too small. We don't need people getting away with murder here. How do we feel safe? I have three sons. My friend has a son. I know other men, many others have sons and daughters. Are you not afraid? I am. I don't feel safe. We need to start connecting with these youths. They are lost. We did. So, something went wrong. In order for them to get better, we have to guide them. I need all the OGs to step up and start calling these young men out. Because you ain't an OG if you're allowing these young men to run, run around here with guns and killing people. Enough is enough. That is not the answer. We have bigger enemies to fight. We're bigger. Look at the park we're standing in. What did we fight for? To kill each other? That's not progress. And I think we are responsible as a community to put our foot down and let them know that this is not going to be accepted by us anymore. We're tired. We're tired of burying our kids. We're tired of the senseless violence. We need our fathers in our community. We need our young men. We have a whole generation basically missing from this island because of the conditions here. So seeing our young men dying, the ones that can't get out, is very, very disheartening. We could do better. The police need our help, period. They can't do it alone. We know, we know, we talk, we gossip. We have to stop condoning these behaviors. We have to stop losing our eye trains and our man them. But I have a sad story to tell you. In the 80s, our place was rampant with crack. And it's sad to say that a lot of parents right now are crack babies and they don't know. They have not a clue because back then I could tell you I suffered and it at both ends. Have no shame to say. In the 80s, our island was rampant. The world was in a chaos with crack. Now you do the math. A lot of those crack babies are now adults that have their own children. So now when you're talking about going back to try and save from the home, maybe we got to start with the parents too. Woo! I am sorry to say, yes. we have parents that is 30 odd and 40 just coming up there that they last too, believe it or not, yes. because they are a product of being a crack baby wow. that now have their own children. And they are doing, some of them, some of them are doing their damn their best yes. to make sure that you them follow the path, but I got to remember now. Our youth them getting raised for more than just parents. Our youth them getting raised from the Facebook, from the yes. IG, from the Snapchat, the, yes. the, the TV. Things that we put in our house that we held morally and said no to. <laughs> TV. And some laws and rules and regulations are telling our children it's okay. Oh. That needs to stop. So when we're talking about going back to we start from in the home, we're not just going to talk about dealing with the youth them, because the youth them is following and seeing what the parents them do too. So we're going to got to start with the mothers and fathers. Unfortunately, we have a household right now without a lot of fathers. I am one. And I go tell her, you the message to stand up and tell her, you're six and eight-year-old child. That their father ain't coming back. 
is a feeling I wish not even at my worst enemy. It's not cool. It's not a feeling that ever goes away. We don't never fight to get over it. We have to fight to learn to cope with it. Every time I hear another man dead, I get flashbacks of having to tell my children in their father they are. Every time I hear a sister dead, I could go back to my sister and nephew. How you come on, yo? If anybody walking wrong here with a neighbor string, when you see one get touched, you're going to feel it. Because that's what connects us all. That neighbor string. Children or no children, if you're there, you got a belly button, you're born into the wall, so you're connected somehow. He could be killed by a stray bullet over ignorance, over stupidness. That don't mean nothing. Most of these men killing each other out for money. There's so much money out here to be made. Find another way. You don't have to be on the top. You don't have to be selling drugs. There's so much things to do out here to make a little money, to keep going. I've survived years without cash, and I have a child. And I don't get child support, but I did it because I seek for help. That's all you have to do is seek for help. I know this because I talk to a lot of people about their own inner problems and their families. And people have this attitude that I've noticed down here. Most of us have an attitude that if it ain't my family, it ain't my problem. And oh, they're too big. They're too grown for me to constantly be telling them how they should be. Well, if you give up on trying to help people see the truth and see the way, then they will never find a way. Because you're the only one that could see it. And because you get frustrated, because they won't listen, you give up. But that's part of life. We are human. We are going to make mistakes. But if you know the way, it is your job, it is your obligated duty to call your brother and your sister and carry them on the path. It does not make you a better person to say, you know what? I found my journey. I find my path. And if you didn't, so what? That is wrong. And that's why as a community, we can't stand together because everybody is only obligated to themselves. Yes. They don't have a fucking feeling that I am obligated to my community. I am obligated to my sisters and my brothers. It could be me. That is part of the reason why I'm here. I didn't lose a son, but that could have been my son. Yes. That's my only son. I have no other children. And that's most of us women are down here in the same and the same thing, we have one child, and we are doing our best to try and protect the one we have. And it's a shame that I left Babylon, coming home thinking that my son gonna be safe. And I have troubles letting him go out on the street to ride a bike or play basketball because I'm afraid that if he goes on the court, a shootout could happen against, against two men, and my child could get innocently touched for something he has nothing to do with. All of these violence, all these senseless killings is literally over nothing. It's a cycle. It's because you did my uncle, I gonna come back for you. Yeah. If you don't stand firm and say, you know what? I know that losing my brother or losing my father was hard, but I am not going to continue this cycle. I will be the example to stop the cycle. Then, then the killings will stop. People have this thing of keeping it in a cycle, keeping it in a cycle. We, it's our responsibility to stop it. We can't look to the government. We can't look to the police. We don't even have the funds. The police officers don't have the, the resources, the forensic technology that they have in the United States. We don't have down here. So how we expect your children? Raise them. Raise them. I heard about the tax of queens. Ladies, you are queens. Don't be in a club with your daughter and trying to com be competing, competing with each other in a club. That became a problem in our society. And unless we talk to each other and bring up these things as facts, we can't be afraid to talk about it. And that's why I have our community going the way it's going. We are a resilient people, and we can bring it back. There's talks of the village to raise a child. My goodness, what a better place to do it than in the US Virgin Islands. Look at where we are. Look at the sign that's right here. You know what park we in? You know what these people fought for? Yes. We gotta stand up against injustice. We have to, and we need like minds. So I'm asking each and every one of you as we go along after today, from here on in, to be a brother's keeper. And you can't be afraid to open your mouth. Like the young lady said, Ja! 
is who protect you. God is who protect you, not man. So you can't be afraid and don't wait until the violence hit on your doorstep to say something. Imagine we are a community today that is so desensitized that we could be showing videos of a crime scene. The parents haven't even known or got the word yet that their son or daughter was just slaughtered. We gotta put a stop to this. We gotta put a stop to this and it's our own people doing it. Our own people. The Black Lives Matter movement, I understand exactly what it is. But I want you all to know that our lives matter here too. Ain't nobody coming in here to kill us. We killing each other. And a lot of these young men finding out later on that they're family. So we gotta stop it. Again, parents, I plead to you to talk to your children. They are your children, not your friends. There's a separation. Fathers, I'm asking you to take a real role right. in your children's lives. If you were to take a real role in your children's lives, some of you that fall to the wayside wouldn't have the time to be in that nonsense because you're so busy trying to keep your son on the right path. Just yesterday, I saw a young man, 10 years old, and this guy, the only thing he ate is a certified plumber. But this young... My name is Shomi Springer, and I'm the mother of Yafara Elijah Brando. I'm gonna be honest. I was not coming. I was not coming. Patasha, Miss Tracy, she was Yafara's eighth grade teacher. So when this thing first happened, Patasha sat on my porch with me, held hands, and we cried. Cried as mothers. Because she knew what type of mother I was, so she knew what type of son Yafara was. 